Hey guys, I'm Lee Bratcher, the president of the Texas Blockchain Council. I'm here with my friend, Representative Tan Parker. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the history of, uh, and it's a brief history, right, of, of Texas leadership in um, the blockchain Bitcoin space. Uh, it's a long history, though, when we think about Texas leadership in sort of the economic uh, innovation Absolutely. space. Absolutely. Uh, so, Representative Parker, we first talked in, in late 2019, um, and you had already kind of set out this vision with um, House Bill 1576 in the previous session. That would have been probably the 86th session. Right. And then, um, and then we have a conversation, and it grows to be much bigger than that. And at, at this point, if we fast forward, we are, Texas is uh, the nearly undisputed leader, uh, the jurisdiction of choice for, for Bitcoin mining for sure, uh, and for blockchain innovation as a whole. Uh, Wyoming has done some great stuff as well, but we just have come alongside Wyoming with a much larger economy, this ninth largest economy in the world. Uh, so let's talk through the history of this, because you were there from the beginning, and uh, give the, the viewers an, an idea of what your vision was, what were the steps that it took to get us here in, in 2022? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Lee. What an honor to be with you. And thank you for your leadership on this issue. And I got to tell you, you've just done an amazing job. Since we had our first conversation back in 2019, uh, the concept of the Texas Blockchain Council was all just a brand new idea. It was an idea. Uh, had no members, had no support, had no anything. And and the same thing legislatively. I had a, a vision for doing blockchain. I had started as financial services chairman in the Texas House in previous sessions and doing some interim studies where we had looked broadly at blockchain technologies to kind of understand all the different applications for Texas uh, and what an impact it could have for the future. Uh, but then we really got uh, more granular and focused. And uh, uh, in the 19th session, I actually had filed a bill uh, that would have been a blockchain, if you will, overview to uh, give us some guidance and some direction on how to address blockchain opportunities in Texas, those areas that were appropriate, those areas that weren't appropriate and so forth. That bill, unfortunately, in 2019 did not uh, go through. And so we really spoke at that time after that session had concluded. And my commitment was to come back and to work on that bill in the uh, 21 session at the same time to do something specific with regard to digital assets and uh, for Texas to be the leader. Wyoming, of course, had done a great job uh, and been a leader uh, in the space. I'm a guy that believes, as you know, Lee, in federalism. And mm -hmm. so the states are where the real innovation is for America. It's not happening in Washington, D.C. The real innovation happens in the states. Mm -hmm. And kudos to Wyoming for getting out of the gate early. Uh, but it's a proud Texan. Of course, I couldn't let that stand. Uh, we need to leapfrog Absolutely. Wyoming. And we've done that now with the work uh, that, that we've done collectively in Texas in 21. Um, and now here we are in 22, continuing to make strides and to prepare for the next legislative session that will be in January of 23. But the future is so bright, and I can't tell everyone that's watching just how proud I am of Lee and the team that has built the Texas Blockchain Council. Uh, Lee, you were incredibly supportive of all the bills that we've passed. You, every uh, committee hearing, every time I needed support from the community, you were there. And so I just want to tell you how, how grateful I am for all that you've done and uh, for helping to put Texas on the map, so to speak, in this space. Well, we're grateful for you as well and for your colleague, uh, Representative Corriglione, who will be with us later tonight, uh, for Senator Paxton, for her support for Governor Abbott. Uh, the Speaker also appointed five members to the uh, working group, Lieutenant Governor, as well. And so it's been a collective effort. And I do want to make sure the viewers know you are soon going to be Senator uh, Senator Parker uh, in the uh, the near future. Uh, that election obviously is is this November. So if you live in, uh, <laughs> let me let me attempt to get this anywhere from Wise County, North Fort Worth, Denton County, uh, coming down into Farmers Branch, Carrollton, uh, some of the mid cities and Highland Park, anywhere in that space. <laughs> Just look up who represents me, and if if uh, the, the obviously the districts have been redrawn. So uh, Senate District 12, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, Lee. That's new right. new Senate District. That's right. You, you did a great job of covering. So Wise, Denton, parts of Tarrant, good a bit of Dallas County, all in SD12. And look, it's obviously in, in God's hands. And uh, I, I go to the voters, obviously, in November and ask for their support. 
uh, to continue to keep Texas open for business and to keep Texas strong and healthy and vibrant. And uh, that's certainly what I've worked on for years in the House and would look forward to continuing to do uh, in the Senate if given the opportunity. Well, and we've uh, the Texas Blockchain Council's endorsed Representative Parker for his leadership. Thank you, uh, and so we would clearly um, extol or encourage our uh, voters here in the North Dallas area. Of course, we've got people all across the state, but if you live in that area, uh, absolutely go out and support Representative Parker. Thank you, Lee, very uh, much. Thank you. Come November. Thank you. So let's get into the, these these kind of steps that we've taken here. Um, of course, House Bill 1576 created the working group. House yes. Bill 4474 um worked with the definitions, the Uniform Commercial Code, Yes, uh, defines virtual currency, how do you perfect your security interest in virtual currency. Yes. Um, we, many a Zoom call we set in <laughs> to get that all squared away. Um, as we look to, let's think about the interim too after the session. I, sure. I know you were influential with um, Mr. Cooper, you're good friends with Mr. Cooper, the Department of Banking. Their regulatory guidance that Texas charter banks can now custody these assets. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, look, I mean, that was an enormous, enormous accomplishment. I mean, you know, when the Texas Banking Department said that you can charter these assets, I mean, that's just, you know, it's just one more credibility uh, item, if you will, for, uh, you know, all of these uh, digital assets. And, you know, I think it just really said that this is alive and well. It's very serious. And once we passed the legislation that you referenced the two bills, I just think uh, all the agencies of government recognize that this is the future. Um, and so, you know, I, I want to let people know that a lot of the time we were working on this, of course, was during the height of the COVID period. One of the things I would tell Lee is, look, let's let's uh, put together a group of folks that could be members for your organization going forward. And we'll talk about legislation. We'll brainstorm. I wanted to hear from them. They presented and shared a lot of their ideas and concepts about how Texas could move forward. It was a very collaborative process. And that's really what ended up with uh, the two bills that Lee referenced. Uh, one, the blockchain study group broadly, uh, and the other obviously specifically to focused on digital assets. So, uh, you know, I just think it was very collaborative. It was all the hard work interacting with your members. I mean, I want people to know that so many of these uh, blockchain members, organizations, we've interacted with over the last couple of years and gotten their feedback in person or over a Zoom. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's made all the difference. And a lot of them, of course, have come, walked away from their businesses during the day to come and testify at the Capitol to support this legislation. So it's so important that people realize that the legislation that we pursue in Austin is a direct feedback from what we get from you, the constituency. So I appreciate so much the chance to come before you guys, talk about these issues, and get you guys plugged into the process. Uh, but the fact that the uh, the great banking commissioner of Texas, Charles Cooper, uh, saw the merit in this uh, and making that decision was enormously positive. It will continue to be a great sign for the adoption of all these digital assets, not just in Texas, but frankly in the country. That's my assessment. Absolutely. Okay, so we've gotten almost to the present. I think the, the only other thing in the interim that I think perhaps we need to think through from a historical perspective is um, the, the Texas Ethics Commission. So that the Texas Ethics Commission has now uh, issued guidance saying that candidates for public office can accept virtual currencies like Bitcoin and others uh, as uh, contributions mm -hmm. to their campaign. Right. Um, most of those in the community are hodlers, if you will, so they're not going to be <laughs> donating that. If they're going to be donating, they're going to use their dollar, U.S. dollars to donate still. But right. it is a symbolic move. Sure. Similar to we were talking earlier today about Fort Worth. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's another thing that's that's in the interim. No, very for recent us to talk past. about. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know you know you're very good friends with Mayor Parker, Maddie Parker in Fort Worth. Uh, talk a little bit about that, uh, how that transpired and your, your opinion on on the situation for worth? Well, again, I mean, as I said a few minutes ago, Lee, I mean, you know, my my belief is that innovation occurs in the states <laughs> and not in D.C. And so to have, you know, one of the largest cities in the country in Fort Worth recognize this is the future and want to participate in it, uh, not just in terms of creating a workforce and a culture and an environment that supports it. Uh, but the city itself wanted to engage itself. I mean, it's pretty unbelievable. That's why it made you know great headlines here recently when uh, uh, Mayor Parker and uh, the leadership in Fort Worth made that happen. Uh, again, I think it's another great sign for the future that it's being adopted, uh, that it's gaining uh, traction, 
Um, and let's talk about what are the big picture here is, right? I mean, so we went back and forth on these bills. We had all the stakeholders at the table that try to do something that would be very productive and meaningful. Uh, the first rule of legislation for me is do no harm. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we wanted to make certain that we were intelligent in what we did, uh, that we had the lightest regulatory touch possible uh, for the maximum benefit, right? To be able to have the maximum benefit. Uh, that's the Texas model, right? We try to minimize regulation at every turn. Uh, but the big picture is, why is this of interest? Well, I mean, to be candid, in so many ways, there's so many different people have different views on why this is taking off and why it's become a firestorm. Uh, but, you know, I'll tell you one of them. When, when you have a federal government today in the current administration that's trying to look into every transaction of every American citizen above $600, it's a fundamental issue around liberty and freedom. And, and I think those that are mining, obviously, all these digital assets recognize that. They realize that's an invasion. Uh, and they realize that this is, uh, this is a domain that, that uh, should be supported. Uh, and it should get beyond politics. It should be something that is uh, both sides of the aisle, conservatives, uh, Republicans and Democrats alike, should be working on these issues because it's about good innovation for the country. Now, the other big issue for me, frankly, and we've talked about this a lot, and one of the things that we need to work on is doing an op-ed. I want to write an op-ed on this topic, and that is that the dollar, uh, being the reserve currency of the world, is the quintessentially most essential factor for a healthy American economy long term. Mm -hmm. No question. And maintaining and strengthening the dollar as the reserve currency of the world is in every American's best interest. And so when I look at national security implications, not just economic security for the state of Texas and for the country as a whole. In my mind, it's essential uh, that we get it right. And so my view is what we're really doing, Lee, is we're adding assets to the balance sheet of the state of Texas and therefore the balance sheet of the United States. And the more assets we put on the balance sheet of the United States, the stronger our dollar is, the stronger position we're in to be able to maintain uh, you know, the current structure globally uh, with regard, regard to the dollar being the reserve currency of the world. So, again, there's no factor, in my opinion, more important to the economic well-being of not just Texans, but Americans broadly, than making certain that's in place. And so I really view all that we're doing here, all the mining activity, all of this push to digital assets as a great thing to support uh, our national security and our economic strength as an American people. A lot to unpack there. I want to hit on three things. Yeah. Mining central bank digital currencies and the dollar. Yes. So it started with a dollar. Um, the, as you said, it's an, another asset. It's not going to be the panacea, right? No, it solve certainly. Everything, but it's another asset to be combined with the incredible balance sheet that the United States has. We gotta maintain treasury bills. The interest rate has to be incredibly low. Our borrowing costs has to remain low. Yes. If the United States borrowing costs increases to five, six, seven, eight percent, we're in a world of hurt. If the dollar is no longer the world's reserve currency, as you said, that's a huge problem because then we're borrowing in somebody else's currency, not our own. 100%. Um, and that, that would be traumatic for the global economy. Absolutely. Absolutely it would. You know, central bank particularly digital. terrible for the United States. That's right. Right. So central bank digital currencies, we've seen the digital yuan in China, the Chinese yuan. They were giving it to elected, or excuse me, they were giving it to uh, Olympians yeah. who came to the Olympics in China in February and just giving it out for free so that those Olympians, they go back to their home countries and spend uh, on the rails of the, right. the Communist Party, uh, the Central Bank of China yes. uh, on the digital yuan. The, the Fed is currently considering a central bank digital currency here in the United States. And um, I, I do think that the Fed has the greatest of intentions, uh, respect our institutions and our leaders, but I am absolutely very concerned with the lack of privacy that a central bank digital currency that would be even more intrusive than the lowering of the travel rule and uh, the IRS limit moving from 10,000 to 600 with yes. suspicious activity. Um, central bank digital currency would be zero privacy for yeah. Americans. Yeah. You could impose a negative interest rate. You could even impose like an expiry date on on government uh, handouts. Yeah. yeah. Lee, look, you said it very well. I agree completely. That would be a terrible thing to have happened. I hope 
uh, that that will not be a direction that the American federal government goes in. Uh, I don't think that's healthy for the United States. I don't think that's healthy broadly for this uh, whole digital asset movement. Um, I think it would set us back in a big way. Um, you know, you talked about the Yuan and China. Uh, again, uh, you know, it is my perspective that we don't want to see that be successful. Uh, and I just am skeptical of, uh, of a national digital uh, effectively currency like that. I just think it's very unhealthy and we need to do what we're doing today. Um, I think that's the power of it. And that's my message to Washington is let the states bring innovation, let individuals bring innovation, let the people bring sector. innovation. The private sector is where all innovation occurs, not big government. And that's my view. I think it would, again, take us back backwards in a major, major way. So I hope they are uh, regulators are hearing that very clear in Washington, uh, that people in the, in the, in the marketplace uh, that believe in free enterprise and capitalism uh, are uh, finding that concept to be abhorrent and uh, hope that they'll go in a different direction. You know, I, I was put in touch recently with a very large trade association, national trade association. I, I won't say which one, but um, one of the largest trade associations yeah. in the nation. And they shared, it's, it's one of those industries that Bitcoin and crypto could potentially run into conflict with, mm -hmm. right? You would, we wouldn't think that they would be natural allies, Sure, but they, the, the connection point is they share our opposition to central bank digital currencies. Yes. Yes. And so, um, I hope that that conversation remains fruitful. We potentially could do a joint press release around our concern. Um, this idea just came to me and I know we're recording this live, but, um, <laughs> perhaps even a, a joint resolution from the, the, the Texas legislature yes. um, expressing concern about this at some point in the future. Well, as a legislative body in Texas, we've waited on lots of issues, obviously, that affect the nation. What we do in Texas usually changes the country. They follow uh, what we do in Texas. And this would be a prime example. We certainly could do some type of resolution uh, in the House and the Senate. Uh, that would speak to the fact that we think this would be a very poor decision to go, a uh, very poor decision to take for the good of the country, would not be in the best interest of the United States economically, nor uh, this industry uh, here in its infancy. I think it would be a, a huge mistake. So that's that's my assessment. Let's sign that up. Let's make it happen, Lee. Let's do that next well, session. You're the one that will make it happen, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, just, 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 just track me. Make, make sure I don't forget, I'll, Lee. I'll, I'll, but let's make that happen in January. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So the third thing is Bitcoin mining. Yes. Uh, the same day that we made the announcement about Fort Worth, we were having a meeting, um, a dialogue with the um, executives over at ERCOT, Mr. Jones yes. and uh, his staff and his executive staff. Bitcoin mining is coming to Texas in a big way. Big way. Yeah. Um, we estimate that there are over 2,000 W-2 jobs that have been created. Now, we're getting that confirmed through a third-party mm -hmm. economic study for the state. Right. Um, and 20,000 indirect jobs. 1099 and uh, ancillary jobs. Yes. Plumbers, electricians, uh, these kinds of things. So W-2 jobs is one thing. 1099 jobs is another thing. And then and then the economic impact on the county, Milam County, Dickens County, where, wherever. Any county where there's activity, right? Denton County. Yeah, you bet. It is now home to one of the, it's not yet uh, operating, but it's yep. under construction. Yes. Will be w one of the top five um, counties in the state of Texas, which is the world leader in Bitcoin mining. Yeah. Uh, Core Scientific is, is building there. Yeah. It's, I so. mean, it's incredibly exciting. I mean, I, look, there's nothing more exciting to me than seeing entrepreneurs go put their hard earned capital to work here in Texas in these great counties. Um, in the case of Milam County, you're, you're bringing back communities that really were uh, economically uh, devastated in years past as one technology became obsolete and new ones then developed, but they were kind of left behind. And now they're uh, back at the table, uh, prime time, and having the chance to revitalize a lot of their infrastructure and their assets uh, and to be in this space. So, so it's an exciting thing uh, that we see happening in a place like Milam County, Texas, and, and across the state of Texas. So it just couldn't be a better time to see this kind of economic activity occurring with all the Bitcoin mining and all the digital asset play all over the state. It's very, very exciting. Absolutely. Speaking of Milan County, I was with Judge Young today, the oh, county judge. He was down there in Bell County, just the next county over in Temple, uh, sharing with the Bell County uh, leadership yep. about the, the economic benefits that it has, has brought. Bitcoin Mining, uh, Winstone, Riot Winstone, the company that mm -hmm. owns that facility, sure. is the largest employer in the county Absolutely. by far. Yeah. And uh, Temple is obviously, Bell County has got more urban, a little bit more population. Yep. Uh, I, I guess not quite urban, but 
um, higher population density than Milam County. Uh, but I, I could foresee Baylor Scott and White and Bitcoin mining be, being the top two uh, employers in Bell County in the near future. And would that be incredible? I mean, again, just to see what's happening, this economic transformation, it's an economic renaissance really in Texas. Uh, and, and the level of activity since we passed these bills, uh, you know, it's just really amazing since the governor signed them in the law last summer to where we are a year later almost. It's just really incredible, spectacular what's happening. And again, it, I, I just want to give all the credit to the ingenuity, the entrepreneurs that call Texas home, uh, that put their capital on the line every day, that take the risk, the risk takers uh, that make America and make Texas what it is. It's uh, it's really spectacular to see. But I I just think the pace of uh, additional innovation is going to continue to exceed uh, any of our wildest dreams. Um, and I think you're going to see more and more adoption. And again, I kind of got big picture on you economically, Lee, a few moments ago. But why are we doing this? I mean, I, I just think at the end of the day, people need to realize it's in the best interest economically of this state and of this nation that we do so. Uh, if we don't take a strong and forceful leadership role globally as in the United States, uh, and Texas in particular leading the United States, uh, then we'll lose. We'll, we'll be second fiddle to China, uh, any other country around the world that wants to play. And uh, certainly I'm well aware with what China did in shutting down the miners. I think in many ways it's because they lost control. Mm. They wanted to control everything. And so they shut it down and they saw that America was emerging as a leader in the space. And they really lost. Uh, I think they lost the race, so to speak. Mm. Uh, and that's what's going on. And it is imperative upon Texas, those of us that are uh, blessed to serve uh, in government, uh, those that uh, serve in advocacy, advocacy, advocacy groups like yourself lead to continue to drive that message of opportunity and that Texas must continue for the good of the country economically to be the leader uh, in this space. And that's why I'm so excited about your, what you're doing here, the Texas Blockchain Council and all your members. I mean, let's give it up for your member organizations that are uh, paying dues and supporting this and driving this. Uh, it's their ideas that are really driving your innovation that you all share with me and my colleagues in the legislature. Uh, at the end of the day, as a lawmaker, we're only as good as the feedback that we get from our constituency. Mm -hmm. And that's why this organization and your advocacy is so important uh, to the future of this, uh, of this state and this industry in particular. Well, Representative Parker, this has been a great conversation. Uh, we will continue it in the days and weeks ahead. Um, I'm sure we'll have you on stage at the Texas Blockchain <laughs> Summit in, in the fall, uh, right after the election. It's November 17th and 18th. Perfect, perfect. Uh, we, we wanted to make sure not to cut into campaigning and put it in October on an election year. Hey, that'll work out great. So we put it right after the election, and uh, we'll have a, a panel of experts from uh, the state legislature. Representative Parker will be there, Representative Capriglione, and... Um, We'll, we'll continue to drive forward. Yeah. And so no, it's exciting. I appreciate you being with us. And I know um, our, our viewers will, will glean a lot from the conversation. And uh, I'm sure they'll want to engage with you further online or here at some of these events. Well, if we're going to be a service, you let us know. Please reach out. Uh, people want to get a hold of me, but love to get your thoughts and ideas. And thank you, Lee, for your leadership. It's been an honor to, to lead uh, from a public policy perspective on these issues and look forward to the future. It's uh, incredibly bright for Texas and, and for our people. So. God bless, and thank you for the time, Lee. Really appreciate it very much. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for Enjoyed watching, it. guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.